Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Uh, time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. Uh, we do have Chris Wandu who will be joining the conversation as we proceed. I'd like to start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Let's find out what big stories are making it. Uh, on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, you have many killed as 21-story building collapses in Lagos. Uh, this will be dominating all of the papers uh, because it's a very big one. Uh, you have several riders underneath the bold caption. Four bodies recovered. Honor project manager, others trapped. Structural engineers resigned before collapse. Investigation ongoing, Lagos government is quoted. We must get to the root of the matter. Uh, find out who is saying all of that. Uh, these are some of the riders you find on page five of the Daily Independence. Now, moving away from that uh, particular caption, you also have involvement in internal security, straining our resources. Uh, that's what the military is quoted to say. Fuel scarcity looms as Ipman accuses depot owners of price hike. Another interesting caption. Impeached speaker declared wanted as play two assembly crisis continues. Uh, that's also on page six. EFCC arrest Obi Kubana over money laundering. Uh, that's also another caption. More details available on page uh, 39. Dangote cement records one trillion hour revenue growth. The sugar earnings uh, drops by 41.7%. Uh, that's it on uh, the Daily Trust. We'll just check out one more headline and then we move away from the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. 774,000 jobs. Federal government owing beneficiaries 7.3 billion naira. Uh, that's what the minister is quoted to say. All of that on page four of the Daily Trust newspaper. That's it. All right. To the punch newspapers. 10 die. As 21-story building collapses in Lagos, designer warned of a tragedy. About 40 workers were on site when the building came down, says eyewitnesses. Developer engineers, clients, and others trapped. Song Wolu orders investigation. Anambra decides, Saturday poll must hold. Our representatives are ready to assist, says Masob. An IPOB defends ESN over Anambra killings, tackles Uzodimma. International airfares rise as Naira crashes on IATA platform. We can also find on the punch, consumers demand privatization review as power generation drops to 3,844 megawatts. Reps probe collapse of $1.89 billion Delta Steel community, uh, Delta Steel, I beg your pardon, as a community fumes. Once again, reps probe the collapse of $1.8 billion uh, Delta Steel. Community films. Oddly, outrage grows. Raid team leader, uh, whistleblower, face police panel. A few others on the punch. Amotekun begins interstate patrols to tackle kidnapping and others. Monarch denies villagers killed and customs men. Residents flee Ogun community. Uh, we can also find uh, fuel queue resurface, uh, fuel, fuel queues resurface in Nasarawa, Abuja, Niger, as marketers hike prices. EFCC picks up Obikubana, alleges money laundering and tax fraud. Uh, I think that's all we are going to take on the punch this morning. All right, let's move away from the punch newspaper and check out the Nation newspaper this morning. A bold caption reads, Minister, government owes... 774,000 jobs beneficiaries, 7.3 billion naira might just be dominating the papers. Uh, you have bank issues to blame, says Kiyamo. Payment will be before end of year. Uh, that's the rider you find. You also have our number 2021. Uba Saludo Ozibo call for dialogue with IPOP. Uh, that's uh, the rider you find. You also have 76,104 voters, reeks no voting. Uh, all of that on the front page of the Nation newspaper. IG orders probe of siege to Odili's Abuja home. That's on page 28 of the Nation newspaper. 
You also have depot owners increase petrol price by nine naira. Uh, Pengasons quoted on that. Uh, that's on page seven. And Buhari, Biden, others seek end to carbon emission. Uh, it's also on page 30 of the Nation newspaper. And just before we move away, fracas at the House of Assembly over speakers' removal and uh, four die in collapsed 22 story Ikoyi Lagos building. You also have a picture, uh, pictorial representation of uh, what actually happened yesterday or what it looks like right now. Okay, to pick up a copy of the Nation, I'm sure you get all of the information. All right, and um, let's move to the Daily Independent newspapers this morning and see so what we can quickly find. Of course, uh, the big one there is still on the collapsed building. The big picture you can see there, it says also, uh, Senate says Buhari's government out of tune with reality decries budgetary allocation to solid minerals and steel development. Police arrest and battle plateau speaker and 10 others. National Assembly draws flag over on called for interference in aviation. Stakeholders condemn lawmakers for halting new handling rates. One Nigeria may lose FAA Category 1 status. Three dead, several trapped in collapsed 21-story Lagos building. Uh, it says also the building always vibrated at night, says the site engineer. Nigeria's worst military government, better than Buhari's, says Governor Tom. Invasion of justice, Odile's residence, perpetrators will face the wrath of the law, says the IGP. Invasion and embarrassment to the nation, Ohaneze. Diri one security operatives punished for the siege. Outrage as premium steel officials walk out of reps panel. Reps demand presence of MD over misappropriation of $1.89 billion assets. Host communities demand revocation of sale. And finally, COVID-19, Ogun to bow on vaccinated residents from markets, schools, and government offices. Chris Wandu, good morning. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. It's, it's, a, it's a cocktail of stories here and there. There's so much in the papers this morning. Um, I'm guessing we should start here in Lagos uh, with the collapse of the 21-story building. I agree with you. Let's go. Go ahead. Let, let's hear you. But I just want, I want to get your, to your thoughts. Okay. Um, it's quite unfortunate uh, what happened yesterday uh, with the collapse of the 21 or 20 story building uh, has been reported. Uh, this is a, a collapse too many, especially in Lagos. Uh, and um, I, I continue to wonder when such happen and government issue uh, press statement to be investigated, those involved will be prosecuted and the rest of them. But at the end of it all, we find out that nothing happens. We have classical example. One with, the, uh, with what happened um, at synagogue. We are close to 100 uh, Nigerians and foreigners and we had uh, died. And um, I know that um, that issue went to court. Now, nothing has come out of it. After that, I'm talking of the major one now. One happened at somewhere at Lekki or is after Lekki. Remember that um, um, estate? Uh, that we had a collapse, and the MD of the company of that uh, company was arrested and was to be prosecuted. To yeah. today. We didn't know what happened to that case. There have also been other couple, um, other uh, collapses here and there, pockets of collapses and rest of them. And at the end of it all, what we hear the Lagos State government say that, oh, we're going to uh, investigate that, we're going to prosecute those involved and rest of them. But my challenge here is that I, I, I saw the statement uh, issued by. Um, it's because the government yesterday uh, and early this morning, not only um, of um, which investigate the that collapse, but also uh, s stating that um, uh, the the approval given for the building is for 15 floors and not 21 floors. And I said, okay, kudos, clap, I clap for them. But the question is that when they got to 15 floor and moved to 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. What did the government do? What did the Lagos State government do? What did the relevant agencies of government do? Did they stop the work or they allow it to continue? And by now, this morning, I've been expecting how in, in, in Senate climbs, the commissioner in charge of that ministry should be on suspension immediately. And other relevant uh, directors or whoever is in charge of um, 
approval for building in Lagos should be, should be on suspension or should be sacked. That is only where you bring, that is how you can only bring in, bring in some kind of uh, deterrent uh, when it comes to issues like that. But at the end of it, nobody is punished, nobody is given. You know, so it is rather unfortunate that uh, we continue to go through this route every time and then um, see people dying and all sorts of manner of collapses and the rest of them because there are some kind of uh, people try to search uh, so change themselves in building. Look at where some of the report coming out where one of the contractors put in a letter last year that to say that the this construction is being compromised and we cannot continue working uh, on this site. And the letter you must have seen that letter all yes. over social media. And I expected that when that letter was written, what did the Lagos State government a relevant the relevant agencies in government do after seeing that letter or after uh, receiving that letter for us to allow this to have gone thank god it's happened now i'm just using the word historically thank god it happened now under construction if we are filling that building and it's fully occupied and people are living there and it now collapse we can 21 story building you could have, you can imagine what could have happened yeah. if that place is good so my for me the bulk of the blame still lies on the Lagos State government and the deliver agencies that give approval for this. So let's see what they will. But to me, I'm not a, uh, optimistic. I know that it still go the same way that others before it have gone, and will continue as if nothing has happened. Well, uh, just to just to quickly mention the the letter you're speaking about wasn't uh, directed to the Lagos State government. Um, it was from uh, Prowers Engineering Limited. It was directed to a Femi Osibona, not the Lagos yes, State government. It was, direct, it was directed to the, what I am saying is, even if it was directed to the owner, yeah. Lagos State, how come that a, a 15th floor house moved from 15 to 21 and nothing was done? Nobody stopped that construction. That is, my, that is what I'm talking about. Oh. Who issued the CO2? Who got the approval for the plan? Yeah, like. Uh, uh, so those are the issues. Yeah, I understand your point. Okay, uh, let's uh, also move away from that and check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Um, the military is saying their involvement in internal security is training their resources. And over the years, you find out that some quarters have been, you know, questioning the fact that the military is involved in civil, I mean, you know, in civil issues, internal issues where you have the police and now they are complaining. I uh, would like to share your thoughts on that. Yeah, the rule for the military across the globe is for, it's against external aggressors, not internal um, uh, insecurity and the rest of them that is the norm across the globe and that is the mandate of the army the primary responsibility of securing internal uh, for internal security in countries are based on the, in the police but from what we are seeing now is it not obvious that the police is overwhelmed that they cannot even handle uh, issues of that nature so uh is a, is a very very um, terrible situation we find ourselves we seem to have overstretched our military um, military, both the army and even the uh, police and other relevant agencies because of the high level of insecurity across the country. But what will they do? They are not at war. Uh, we are not, Nigeria is not at war uh, with any country and they cannot just sit down in the barracks and just watch why everything goes bonkers. So it is also within their mandate to make sure that we are fully secured. But my own challenge here is that I think we should do a lot more in our policing and um, that is where we also be talking about the thinking of the constitution where um state policing uh, as a part of um, the internal organization of security architecture uh, in the country should be based on if you have state policing and states taking responsibility for security within their domain and states then we should also put up the pressure on on national police until we do that We'll continue to run in circle because as you have it now i doubt we could have up to 500,000 policemen going to police about 200 million people it's not possible yeah. then definitely where else we'll get this from dss from uh, civil defense or where that's a short one so the military must definitely come into place so but i believe that we can do more what we should continue doing is continue uh, recruitment of more policemen the last time i checked i think the federal government gave a cover up another recruitment of about 10,000 policemen on the if we continue increasing that, maybe 10,000, 20,000 on a yearly basis, by now I'm sure we'd have gotten it. That is just one aspect of the, of the conversation. The other aspect is funding. 
are we funding the police enough? You can go and check. The police, the average policeman buys his uniform himself. He buys his belt. He buys his boots. And the little you give him a salary does cannot take him home. And every day we continue blaming them that they are standing on the road and collecting 20 naira. So I think there should be a holistic look at our policing system and the way we treat our security agencies. Most of them are not insured. Their lives are not insured. If you die, you just die. If they just die for nothing. So those are the issues we are looking at. And in that kind, we see that the security agencies are not ready to put in their best, especially the policemen who want to die in a situation that when they know that when they die, their children will not be taken care of. So we need to have a holistic look at our policing system, make sure that we, the, security, the police are well funded. Also make sure that we're having the kind of recruitment that can allow and make the police more attractive to people. What we're having now is just people that just don't have any job or who don't have any other means of uh, job. They just decide to, oh, let me go and join the police. And you also make the police very, very attractive for people to, uh, credible Nigerians to be part of. Then we'll continue to have the kind of problem we're having. Yeah, well, I've seen um, people argue that the idea of police reform in Nigeria is almost impossible because of the, the rot in the system might just be, you know, almost impossible to completely wipe out. Um, but we'll, we're still talking about the police with our next story, and that is in, um, uh, with the Justice um, Odile's residence. It says here on the Daily Independent, the perpetrators will face the wrath of the law, says the IGP. Um, the invasion is an embarrassment to the nation. And, of course, uh, Ohaneze um, is speaking here. Diri wants security operatives punished for the siege. So let's, you know, talk about that now with relations to um, where you're coming from. Let me bring it to the local balance. My brother, what I will say is that is Lori Iro. Lori Iro. <laughs> As we never say, look <laughs> look up fire. <laughs> This is not the first time we are hearing that we are going to investigate. You know where you hear some of these theories. So I just believe that most of the <laughs> don't cover yourself, my brother. That is the fact. That is the situation we find ourselves. What I just mean that most of them are it's like this. We just think we are cool. They just have this press statement kept somewhere. Anything happened, they just draw it out, change the names, change the uh, the date and the rest of that, and just push it out. This is what we hear on a daily basis. So many. You remember what happened when some security agencies raided the homes of. Um, uh, justices of the Supreme Court was anybody prosecuted for that? That is a fringe. That, that we have uh, um, what we call separation of power. The executive have no right to start meddling into affairs of the judiciary. They are established bodies to handle issue of corruption, whatever you name it, in the judiciary, and that is the issue of NGC. that's why you have the NGS. That's the statutory body in charge of that. The same thing in legislature. The legislators have also their also. When you see the police is part of the executive and the situation where you see them just dropping up and down and also uh, DSS and the rest of them going to raid homes of um, uh, um, uh, justice of the, of, the, uh, of the high court, um, federal high court, um, appeal court of appeal and the rest of them. But the most worrisome part of it is that if that woman has been killed, God forbid, in the course of that raid, what would have happened? The, the, the DSS quickly came out and, and issued a statement. EFCC came out and issued a statement. And the uh, Inspector General of Police uh, issued a statement. The AGF issued a statement that they were not part of it. So who was who, who ordered it? That uh, that uh, warrant for search was gotten from a, a, a magistrate court. Who signed that? Who instructed that? The names of the people involved were not. Look at the police. The, the man that led to this thing. His picture is all over the, uh, all over the social media. So what am I saying in essence? We cannot continue going this way. At the end of it, we now start denying, oh, no, we are not part of it and the rest of them. That means there's a complete lapse between within our security agencies. If the IG cannot be able to control what happens in his within his domain or with the policemen under his watch, then they're in trouble. If the AGF, as the chief law officer, cannot be able to point and it is like it and bring to sanction whoever um, issued that uh, uh, warrant, uh, that, uh, that search warrant, then we are in trouble. If the DSS, is, uh, which is our secret police, cannot be able to investigate, also look at issues as it were, and make sure that corporates, so people that are taking the laws into their hands, are well dealt with, then there is a problem. Yep. This must have been happening. It's because it's, uh, it's uh, Mary Odele, who is a justice of the uh, Supreme yes. Court. But do you know how many Nigerians whose home have been broken into by most of these policemen illegally to perpetrate some of these acts? Yeah, we, we, we still get to see, and this reminds me of a video that I saw sometime, a few days ago, actually, of... Uh, 
not sure who they are now, EFCC or the police or, or, or whatnot, breaking in the doors of uh, people's homes somewhere in Edo State um, late at night, at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Um, yes. And, and so, you know, like you said, you know, th this is only making the news because it is uh, just as um, um, orderly. Um, exactly. <laughs> it could be any other Nigerian. Um, but, Mr. Yes. Mr. Wando, is it possible um, that the IGP doesn't know the officers who were at this woman's house? Is it also possible, possible that the Commission of Police in that state is not aware of which officers were at that particular residence? There's a chain of command in the, in the, in the, in the security agents, a chain of command within the, within the local, especially the police. At the local level, you have the DPO. After the DPO, you have the area commander. After the area commander, you have the commission of police. Then, on top of the commission of police is the AIG. Then, also on top of that AIG is the DIG, who also controls certain areas and certain before it gets to the IG. The IG, for the benefit of that, cannot be it can we not know we not sit in his office at Abuja at first headquarters and know what is happening in your local government in your state. Yeah. In Edo. It's impossible. So the fact is that so what are we let them let us go through the ranks and be able to check out where this it came from. I would rather start from the commission of police or the commission of police in F City. I will hold him responsible for whatever happened. Because he's also responsible for whatever happened within the various division in under him. So yes. my query will go to the uh, um, to the commission of police FCT rather than the inspector general of police. Then it is now for the commission of police to now query all those under him. They say this is a special unit or whatever. Who is in charge of this special unit? We are still talking about rating of people's houses. You can be rest, I can tell you probably that even EFCC, what EFCC is the modus operandi of EFCC now, I don't know, it's part of the act. A, 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 was it a, 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 a former housemate um, in Big Brother Nigeria, a lady, some time ago, you, I'm sure you still remember that lady. Yes, we do. Came out to shout, how the EFCC um, operated came into the house, break down her house, uh, ransacked the whole place and the rest of them, say, I mean, saying that they are looking for uh, Yahoo, Yahoo boys or whatever and the rest of them. And when the lady came out, they said, oh no, it wasn't that what happened. We asked you to open that rest of them. Is that how to go about it? What is the essence of the intelligence gathering? Does it mean that these agencies, agencies don't have any intelligence gathering units? You cannot just go into, even if you're asked to go, now they are, what is happening uh, with that report? They say, oh, it was a wrong address. It was a mistake. It wasn't happening and the rest of them. Before you go to search a place, you will say that uh, there were movement, there are movement, uh, certain movement that is, are we not, uh, are you not supposed to limit yourself to so come out, come out and uh, be able to take a, a look at this, investigate this for some time before you can go into the place? I don't know what is wrong with our security agencies. And they continue giving themselves bad names after they say, oh, Nigerians don't like Nigeria, the police. We all like, but their art is not even helping Nigerians to be able to like them. This is not how it is done across the globe. And that is why we are complaining. Okay, let's uh, quickly check out the Nation newspaper. Then that's, this, that's very interesting as well. It talks about the Anambra elections. And um, some candidates like Anduba Chukuma Soludo and Valentino Zigbo uh, calling for a dialogue with IPOP. It, it seems like uh, something interesting. Maybe there's hope. Do you see a possibility of uh, maybe IPOP calling the seat at home order before the elections? During our discussion last week, I mentioned that there is need for us uh, for us to have a dialogue. Um, but even before getting to that, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you must have seen that uh, you watched that uh, governorship debate yesterday. Uh, I laughed myself out at uh, <laughs> some of the <laughs> accusations and counter accusations coming from the three major candidates of the parties. And um, so, but it's good. That is what debate is supposed to be. You are supposed to push your agenda. I'll tell you because. I will tell you that a debate of that nature is the biggest platform for any candidate to be able to sell himself. Because it's not every time you have the prime time spot on television or radio or whatever to be able to do Because if you know what it costs you, so good enough they'll be able to uh, push out their um, agenda and uh, programs on, the, on that debate and then put those to them. But back to your question, I've always believed that everything concerning the issue of IPOP or agitation by any group, either IPOP, Masob, uh, the Igbo group, or whatever you call them, it can only end with dialogue. You 
use of us has never worked anywhere in the world. And that is what, look at what happened in Afghanistan. After 20 years of practically shutting down, um, bombing and rest of them, the US, the U.S. military had to leave Afghanistan because they knew that it was impossible to be able to continue. So that is the same thing. I have always said it that there is need for us to be able to have a holistic look at the let us continue to look at the message, not the message. And that has always been the myth for me. I personally am not a member of I will continue to say it on, uh, on this program. But the fact is that most of the messages being pushed by iPod resonate with me. And that is the issue of uh, marginalization. So if you are saying that your people are marginalized and you are not being listened to, there's always the tendency for people to engage in study. I believe that I personally, with my exposure, believe that we can engage more intellectually in pushing our agendas as an Igbo man. I'm an Igbo man. I would rather prefer an intellectual debate and push agenda than going to the use of this kind of practice and the rest of them. But the fact still remains that I hope for now still have a strong road in the Southeast. And I will repeat it again, as I'm sure I saw it, I said last week. The, of all the governors in the Southeast currently, there's no one that is as popular as Nam De Kalu. Put Nam De Kalu, bring all of them together, let them be in one spot, the five governors or whatever, put them and put Nam De Kalu on the other side. They are going to an election. Now the Kalu will be them hands down. Why? Because the people seem to resonate with what he's saying and the message is pushing. And there is kind of failure within the, the within the leaders because the youth, both the youth and the people no longer trust their leaders. So until we be able to bridge that deficit, then it becomes a problem. So there's the issue of trust between the people and the government. So uh, and the, and, the, and the governors and those in government. But for um, Anambra. Election on Saturday must hold, whether we like it or not, that election must hold. And it behoves on security agencies to make sure that election must hold. The, way it is, the only thing I'm seeing here is that there's going to be voters apathy because of the threat from iPod. We might not be able to see the, the, that kind of high level of voters uh, turnout. And that itself affects the outcome of that election, which means that at the end of it, whoever is going to get, who is going to get elected may not be the true choice, quote unquote, of the people of Anambra State, and that, to me, is where the problem lies. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Back to the punch this morning. Um, it says here, consumers demand privatization review as power generation drops to 3,844 megawatts. There's also um, fuel prices, um, the four queues resurface in Nasarawa, Abuja, and Niger as marketers hike price. Um, if you can, squeeze your thoughts in on those two stories. Yeah, um, power drop, not surprising. Um, I, you, can see, you can see that in the past, you see the current government blaming uh, the past government for the problems, you know, the <laughs> fallen Nigerians and the rest of them. But you can see that there's a systematic way of not doing that any longer. If it was before I hear that, oh, the power has dropped from uh, to uh, 3,000. You see uh, a large line, Mohammed, come and, oh, it was because of PDP, the rot in PDP. We've given APC six years. What have they done? What have they added to the national grid? They met the power at about 4.8 to 5,000. Now it has dropped to 3,000. Is that an improvement? During the campaign in 2015, the APC government promised that they're going to be adding close to about 10,000 to the national grid every year. What has been added? They've told us there will be constant light. What has happened? So uh, it's not surprising. Rather, what will happen on a daily basis is collapse of the national grid. Now we are hearing that there are going to be an audit of the discos and jenkos and the rest of them. Whatever will they do, what Nigerians just want is light, the boss light. And the funniest part of it is that while this electricity is dropping, Nigerians are paying higher for electricity consumption. On a monthly basis, this, there is always this increase. And what, you continue asking yourself, what are you paying for? We have talked of metering all the homes. How many homes have been metered? Rather, the uh, discos will rather prepare estimated bills because that's where they make bulk of your money. You just give people light, um, give them about um, five, uh, 10% uh, of electricity. And then at the end of it, month, you are charging them, charging them so much. And they have no alternative than to pay. I think, apart from what we talk about police and NAPC, the next place where the anti-corruption agencies like EFTC should focus their attention is the, is the power sector. This discourse must be investigated. 
We have done so much. When they started, when it was sold to them, the federal government subsidized and gave them waivers in terms of stars and the rest of them. They even pay, we even paid them money to subvert at the end of it. What again? Instead of adding, we are reducing from 5,000 to 3,000 now. Then you can see where we are. It's a serious problem, serious issue. And uh, pick one on the issue of uh, fuel crisis now. Um, that's what I was saying. I don't know the reason. Uh, so I cannot speak much about uh, fuel crisis. Um, in, within the Southwest, where I am, I know that people are moving in and buying fuel uh, at is and um, coming out of the station. I don't know what the reason is for uh, fuel scarcity in um, Nassau states. Okay. Um, um, let's also talk about uh, quickly this one. I think you probably would have asked, also mentioned that in the course of this, uh, the fact that depot owners are planning to increase or saying they're going to increase petrol uh, by nine naira. Yes, well, they will always increase um, until, you, uh, in as much as we continue to import petroleum, that will always be there. You know, that was the, we are talking about regulation of the downstream sector of the. Uh, of, of the oil industry. In fact, we have even gone to onboard most of these uh, uh, agencies with the passage of the um, Petroleum uh, Act. Um, you can see that DPR, DPRA, and the rest of them. It used to be DPRA that used to determine the price of um, petroleum, but that agency has been scrapped now and replaced by the authority and the commission. The two agencies have been set up um, with the signing of that um, act by the president but we'll continue to uh, find ourselves where we are um that there will always be increases in where until we do the right thing one the number one as we've always said which has become like more of a broken record is the reviving of our various um, refineries across nigeria we continue to export crude oil and import um petroleum products and that also means that we are dependent on foreign prices foreign for um, uh, international Price, uh, uh, prices. If it goes up, then we are in trouble. If it goes down, I don't know where we are. But the issue is that as much as we continue to depend practically on about 99 percent of our petroleum income from um, outside Nigeria, then we are in trouble. We need to do the needful. I will go back to this government again as part of the promises they made in 2015. And I want to ask myself in 2023, what will the APC government use to campaign? Because practically everything they promised Nigerians, have, none of them have been fulfilled. And it gives me a, 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 a picture of that where I think that maybe there's also need for us to try a third course. Since we try PDP, it doesn't seem to work. We try APC, it doesn't seem to work. What next? Who else are we going to try? Which party are we going to try? And that should be the conversation towards 2023 for me. Okay. Well, of course, there's still some time to continue to have those conversations and see if there's any possibilities and uh, um, a third force, you know, would be able to, you know, step in, but we'll see. Chris Wanda, thank you very much for your time on a Tuesday morning. We wish you a very beautiful day ahead. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. And that's it. We hope to thank return with the uh, nice paper day. review and definitely that will be tomorrow. But in the meantime, we're going to tell you what happened today in history. Now, uh, today being the 2nd of November, as of last year, that's 2020, Baby Shark video became the most watched video. If you remember this, Ram, I mean, if you have kids at home, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, that shark, Baby Shark video. It's a very catchy children's rhyme that was recorded by a South African, I beg your pardon, South Korean company called Ping Fong. And so it became the most watched video ever on YouTube. The song was played 4.04 billion times, overtaking the previous uh, record holder of Despacito, that Latin pop smash, uh, smash by singer Luis Fonsi. Uh, if you also know that one, uh, uh, if you also know that one, 7.04 okay billion times that's when it was played now it played back to back that would mean that baby shark had been streamed continuously for about thirty thousand one hundred and eighty seven years ping fong stands to have more about uh, we're talking about money now 5.2 million dollars in pounds we're looking at four million pounds from youtube stream alone it took four years for baby shark to ascend to the top of youtube most played uh, you know, chat. However, the moral lesson is that don't give up, keep pushing. Should we sing that song? 
I don't, I, don't, no, I, don't, I don't know how to. <laughs> I don't know how to. And, and, and it's something that bothered me but, at some point. But if you, you, if, you eventually, if you eventually have a child, you, you definitely know. No, it bothered me because of how popular it was. And I still had no clue what people were talking about. Ooh, like baby so, shark so the, the, yeah, most of 2020 when when the Baby Shark song was going viral, I had no clue what this thing that people are talking about. So, is. so I, <laughs> Dude, I you know need it, to see I how has, I really don't know why you know the, the song. If you you need to see the way kids react to that I song. Don't, I don't know. So, and and just so one like of the things I've never actually watched. <laughs> I've, I have. It has a video. He has a video. I have never no, seen it. No, you need to see it. It's really interesting and very nice. I mean, for the future, for you, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing with the Gangnam Style video. I never watched it, you know, the whole of it. You know, I've seen a few clips here and there, you mm. know, but it was the most popular um, video on YouTube at some point. It hit three billion, I, I believe, and more before Despacito eventually took over and then now Baby Shark. Mm. Um, but I never also got to watch the Gang Gangnam Style video. Um, so when, when things become very, very vile, my, my brain blocks it out. Uh, no, no, for me, I actually think because I, you know, I had presence on radio, so oh. I always had a time oh, where I had to playing? interact with kids. Oh. So I was always on top of that, you know, trying to get them up to speed with, you know, some of those rhymes and songs that would make them very happy. I, I don't know how to sing it. <laughs> Go ahead, sing it. I should sing it? Yeah. Baby shark do 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 <laughs> Okay, let's move away from that. We, should, we, step, we step on the brakes right now. And when we return, we head straight to our very first major conversation for the morning. Please stick around.